Hello there. Welcome to the News in Nepal Television. I am Rosina Rai, starting with the headlines. Ruling parties under pressure to find a way out to the prolonged parliamentary impasse. Parliament's scheduled meeting delayed. The Pali Congress and Unmukti lawmakers of Truck Sudhu Kasim Province send a meeting prevents the CM Sudari to seek vote of confidence speaker holding all party meeting. Chinese President Xi Jinping hosts a Russian counterpart Putin in Beijing to leaders his ties as a stabilizing force in the world. And the table tennis player Santosh Rasta secures Paris on the qualification becomes only played Nepali athlete to achieve defeat. Welcome back. Now we have news in detail. The meeting of the House of Representatives called for 11 a.m. today has not started yet. The meeting today is likely to be delayed further as intra-party consultations are ongoing to settle real parliamentary impasse. Nepali Congress has been obstructing parliamentary proceedings, demanding formation of a parliamentary commission to prove alleged involvement of Home Minister in cooperatives a fraud case. Meanwhile, as per the schedule published by the Parliament Secretariat, Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister Ravi Lamitani will table a motion seeking for the consideration of the political party's Second Amendment Bill 2018. Speaker Devraj Gimiri will seek uh, to approve of a bill received from the President office and the appointment of ministers and ministers of state. The Speaker will also read out a letter from the office of the Prime Minister and Council of Ministers regarding added workload. Likewise, Prime Minister Puspaka Maldal will present the copies of the President address to the Federal Parliament during unveiling of the government's policies and programs. Lawmaker Amar Bahadur Thaba, Chairman of the Education, Health and Information Technology Committee, is slated to present the committee's report for 2018 on the security printing bill. To other update, the Chief Minister of Sudhupasan Province, Adriga Bahadur Sodari, who is due to take the vote of confidence at the provincial parliament today in the meeting that was called at 10.15 a.m. at the start of the meeting, Nagarik Unmukti Party and the Nepali Congress lawmakers obstructed the meeting and prevented the speaker to proceed. Sudari was appointed the Chief Minister on April 18. However, his scheduled parliamentary flight test was postponed twice as a CPN email short for time for discussion. Meanwhile, the CPN email the province parliamentary party has decided to vote in favor of CBN Unified Socialist Party's Sudari, but decided not to join the government. The Sudhupasim Provincial Assembly has 53 members in which Nepali Congress holds the highest 18 seats, while the Mao Center and UML have 11 seats, 8 and Nagari Unmukti 7. The Unified Socialist Party has the strength of 4 seats, followed by Rastriya Prasatantra Party and an independent MPs on seat 8. The 31st Madan Astrid Memorial Day is being observed today, organizing various programs. Today marks the day when a late communist leader, Madan Bhandari, and the Jivaraj Astrid lost their lives in a jeep accident 31 years ago. Pandari and Astrid lost their lives on May 16, 1993, which is just 3rd 2050 Bikram Sabbath. In a fatal zip accident uh, at Nagdunga over Chitun district, the chairman of CPN MLK P. Sharma only reiterated that the party is always effortful to make the dream of both uh, leader Madan Bhandari and Jivraj Astrid the fulfilled. He also added that the party's mission 84 is the footing step to their political idealism realm. Party Chair Oli speaking at the special program organized at Madan Nagar Balk, who expressed that the unethical act to defame and damage the party's prestige by opponents will not be succeed. We take a short break here. Stay with us.
Welcome back. You are watching Nepal Television News. Now we have remaining updates. Two persons were killed and 13 others sustained injury in jeep accident in Papa district. Three injured out of 13 are in serious uh, condition. The ill-fated jeep was bound to Nisti Municipality Ward No. 4 of Papa district. According to the police, the diseased are identified as a six years old Rajiv Sunari of Nisti Municipality Ward No. 4 and 20 years old Tizen Sumai of Ward No. 4 of the same municipality. They succumbed to injury while undergoing medical treatment last night. The district police informed that the injured are receiving medical treatment in district hospital in Nawalparasi. The cause of accident is yet to shorten and a further investigation is underway. Now to weather update. Uh, the weather will be partly cloudy in the hilly areas, including Kosi and uh, Madhya provinces, and generally clear in the in rest of the country. And according to the Meteorological Department uh, Forecasting Division, the weather will be partly cloudy in the hilly region of Kosi, Bagmati, Karnali, and uh, Sudhapasam provinces, and mainly fair in the rest of the country. Light to moderate rain with a thunder and lightning is likely to occur at a few places of the hilly region of Bagmati province, Kandaki province, and uh, Karnali province and at one or two places over Karnali province and Sudhapasim province. There is a possibility of light snowfall at one or two places of the high hilly and the mountainous region of Kosi and the Gondiki provinces. Similarly, the weather will be partly cloudy in the hilly regions over Kosi, Madhes and Karnali provinces and mainly fair in rest of the country tonight. In the next 24 hours, thunder and the lightning will occur at a few places of hilly region of Kosi province and at one or two places of the hilly region in Bagmati, Kandaki and Karnali provinces. At present, the temperature in Kathmandu Valley has been recorded at 19 degrees Celsius. According to the department, the maximum temperature will likely to remain between 30 and 32 degrees Celsius today. Now to international headliners. Israel's Prime Minister on Wednesday insisted there was no humanitarian catastrophe in Rafah as he announced nearly 500,000 people had been evacuated from the South Gaza city amid intense fighting. It came as Palestinians commemorated the 76th anniversary of the Nakba when around 760,000 Palestinians fled or uh, were driven from their homes during the 1948 wartime creation of Israel. Israeli forces have battled and bombed Hamas militants around Gaza's far southern city over Rafah, but classes have also flared again in northern and central areas which Israeli troops first entered months ago. The officers in urban combating besieged Gaza has filled the U.S. warnings that Israel risk being built and down in uh, operation for years. We take a short break here. Stay with us. We have remaining international update. Uh, leaders uh, Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin framed their nation's uh, ties as a stabilizing force in a chaotic world as they made thirsty in Beijing, where the Russian president is seeking greater Chinese support for his war effort in Ukraine and isolated economy. It is Putin's first trip abroad since his March re-election and the second in just over six months to China, an economic lifeline for Russia after the U.S. hit it with unprecedented sanctions over its military offensive in Ukraine. Putin was greeted by C at a grand welcoming ceremony outside Beijing's Great Hall of the People. Footage by state broadcaster CCTV showed. In a meeting, C then told his old friend Putin that China Russia relations were conducive to peace, according to a readout from Beijing's foreign ministry.
Now to France. France ordered the troops to guard ports and the international airport in its Pacific territory of New Saladinia as a state of emergency started on Thursday after two nights of riots left four dead and hundreds wounded. Turmoil erupted after France's National Assembly backed disputed changes to voting rules that indigenous connect leaders say will dilute their vote. President Emmanuel Macron offered to hold a talks Thursday with the Saladinian lawmakers who are also approving the use of security forces and a nighttime curfew to hold the worst violence since in four decades. Shops have been closed and looted and public buildings torched during nighttime violence for people including including uh, Zendami have been killed, officials said. Hundreds, meanwhile, hundreds of people have been injured, they added. To the more updates, before that, uh, let's have a quick look into the highlights of the site. Thousands of visitors flock to Hong Kong's island of Chen Chao to celebrate its annual Bond Festival and it was the few silk or floating colors parrot, which used to be performed with the statues of deities before costumed youngsters replaced them. Sitting from Park Tai Temple, the floats and the troops carrying children in colorful costumes made their way through the packed the street and alleyways. At the stroke of midnight on Hong Kong's Chung Chai Island, till at least a speed climb their way to the top of 14 meters high lower covered with imitation steamed buns in the island annual bun festival. The festive features a traditional parade of children in costume or carried on stands above the heads of the crowd in the afternoon. These uh, traditional customs have been practiced on Cheng Chai for a hundred years with a three-year suspension because of the COVID pandemic. Now to sports. The Bali Devil tennis player Santu Shrestha has created history by qualifying to the Paris Olympics 2024 by winning the South Asian qualification tournament. In the competitive men's singles final of the tournament in Luncher covered her, Santu defeated countryman Samuel Kapil Furish to three. With the win, Santu became only the third Nepali player to make it to the Olympics by winning qualification tournament. This feat was only achieved by Taekwondo players Sangina Baide and Deepak Bista only. At uh, three sets all, Santu secured the final at uh, 11 is to 9 in a thrilling fashion as well as a ticket to Paris Olympics. Both the Nepali players had earlier defeated Sri Lankan players in the semi-finals. In the women's category, Maldivian Dima Fatima Ali defeated a Sri Lankan opponent in the final to earn Olympics qualifications. Now to football dead. Juventus beat Atlanta 1 is 2 0 to win a record extending 15th Coppa Italia on Wednesday as an early strike by Dusan earned uh, Massimilano Olegri's side their first trophy in three years. Juve, who hold both the record for most Italian Cup finals, played 22 and won 15, had not lifted any silverware since they won the competition in 2020-21, when they also beat Atlanta in the final. Vilavik put Juventus in front of the fourth minute when he lapsed onto a pass from Andrea and broke inside the box and sent the ball past goalkeeper Macro from around the penalty spot. It was Atlanta's fifth street Coppa Italia final defeat after they won their solid title in 1962-63.
With this, we come to the end of this news bulletin, but before we say goodbye, quick reminders of the headlines. Ruling parties under pressure to find a way out to the prolong the parliamentary impasse, parliament uh, scheduled meeting delayed. Nepali Congress and Unmukti lawmakers obstruct a Sudhapasin province assembly meeting prevents a CM Sudari to seek a vote of confidence, speaker holding all party meeting. Chinese President Xi Jinping hosts his Russian counterpart Putin in Beijing. Two leaders held ties as stabilizing force in the world. And uh, table tennis player Santu Shrestha secures Paris Olympic qualification, becomes only third Nepali athlete to achieve defeat. Well, this is all we have for this moment. Until our next bulletin, keep watching Nepal television. Have a good day ahead. Namaste.